My name's Paul Pratt. Uh, I've done, been travelling on a motorcycle since I first, since the 1950s when I used to ride into Europe during my two-week annual vacation from work. And I always thought that one day I would set out on, on a journey where money wasn't the main worry and time was my greatest asset. And my big journey was 1966 to 1979 on the Triumph Thunderbird. I've got two other Triumphs. I've got my Triumph Trophy 1950 model, which I've owned since 1958, and which, uh, of course, stayed home during my journey. And then I've got a Triumph Special, which I built up out of parts, and I finished that five years ago and sorted out most of the teething problems now, I hope. And I'm riding that as well. Actually, I did it up to sell and get a steam engine, because I've always wanted a a steam locomotive, model steam locomotive, which I won't have time in my life to build now. But I like my own motorcycle work so much, I want to ride it. And then I've got a modern motorcycle, a W650 Kawasaki, which looks like a Triumph, sounds like a Triumph, but has the modern brakes and lights on it. Travelling in Latin America gave me an entirely different conception of distance, which I'd never experienced during my travels in Europe where you could get 100 miles or even sometimes 200 miles between towns and you had to carry all your provisions, make sure you got a petrol supply for much bigger distances, which I'd never experienced before. Apart from that, just with one language, namely Spanish, you could experience a great deal of beautiful scenery, great changes in scenery from desert to tropical rainforest to high Andean mountains. And uh, also, I, I could experience the uh, real feel of a, a traveller. It, it was a different world then. Sometimes if I didn't make a town on the Andean roads, <clears throat> I just used to put my bag on the side of the road and just sleep alongside my motorcycle. And I then realised, without any light pollution, what, how beautiful the night sky was. The scene will have changed, I mean, People now have access to email, sat-nav, mobile phones, which were... I was out of touch and communication was my, one of my main problems. I couldn't afford phone calls. And, uh, of course, I can't really advise on equipment, especially photographic equipment, because that's changed so much. I, my, one of my big headaches was keeping my film, processing my film, because I was shooting black and white as well as colour. I used to process my own black and white, but colour I, I had to wait very carefully and find very carefully a good lab it, where it could be processed, and I had to keep it cool at the same time. But my record survived, as you know, because I've given shows here, so at least I'm lucky having a record to survive the journey. The Middle East was difficult when I came through it before. It's probably more, di almost certainly more difficult now. But on the other hand, former Soviet Union was absolutely closed to me. I tried so hard to get in that that's a possibility now. Eastern Europe is relatively easy, and China's maybe opening up. So there, are, there have been there have been changes apart from the changes in equipment. But I still think the traveller should set out with the same, basically the same attitude that, that I did. I always found the best way was to maintain a low profile as much as possible and try and fit into the local scene, eat the local food, stay in the small accommodations where ordinary people would stay and generally to be as inconspicuous as possible. At the same time, I think it's important to have a, a sense of humour one must be serious about the project because it's a difficult and very exacting project to carry out, especially if you haven't a lot of financial resource. But on the other hand, you have to try and see the funny side of it at the same time. The amount of information that's available to the prospective traveller now is, is amazing. Books, internet, they, they go forth a lot better equipped than I was, I'm sure of that. And they have much more availability of specialised equipment. But that doesn't necessarily make travel easy. They still have to face the same problems I had. And uh, hopefully we'll put in, as I say in my book, that they will only get out what they've put into it. They, won't, they can't expect any more. They must 
expect to get out more or less what they put in. And it, all, it still requires, I'm sure, a lot of hard effort and hard work. Planning their first trip, yeah, yeah. And, and those that, like myself, that have, that have done it <laughs> and can now sit back and be thankful how lucky we were to be able to do it.